Fred C. Nellis, or Fred's Place, as it was commonly called, was an infamous correctional facility in Whittier, California, in Los Angeles County. It was home to many young men whose street activity led them to this place. Today, I linked up with author and Inglewood native Frank Anton Lewis to discuss his time at Fred C. Nellis Correctional Facility back in the mid-90s. When we pulled up to the address, both of us were surprised at just how much things have changed. So let me guess, it looked nothing like this when you were here. Not at all. So back, when were you here? What, 90? 1995. 1995. Talk about gentrification, huh? Now it's nothing but million dollar homes being built. This is, I can live in Nellis. So tell everybody where we are, where we were. This is 11850 Whittier Boulevard, Fred C. Nellis. The first California Youth Authority facility opened in the state of California in 1855. Fight, fight, crap. Right here. Now Damn. you can get some money and don't have to be crying, be committed crime to come live here. So what is, is, did it even look like that? This is familiar. This is the chapel that was here. Like there was once a chapel Let's here. Let's go walk so over there. we're in the middle, yeah. Okay. Shit, let's just walk around like we- be like the bend. Like we used to walk around this area because this was like the school area. And right. there was like yeah. a track around there with buildings. So there was little places we would run and fight. Like, right here in this area right where this here, greenery Batman, is right now. The, 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 the notorious Nathaniel, now business owner. This is where he made his name. Damn, dog. Mad man from Rolling 60s. Like, this was <clears throat> Nellis. Fred C. Nellis. I've heard it a few times on my channel. It wasn't as bad as YTS because <clears throat> this was where the youngsters come from. The young ones start here. Okay. This was where you had to be 12 to... Anywhere from 12 to 18, 19. And these individuals here were just learning. This is where we started at. And it was a very historical part of our YA life. This is where the terminology YA baby comes from. As for my YouTube channel, this is where I get that from. Because we were raised here by correctional officers and policies and procedures from the state of California. Now I sit here as a free man with a, a book deal and a college degree, proud to say I made it out. Man. There's people jogging in Nellie. Isn't that crazy, homie? And she ain't trying to catch nobody. <laughs> okay. God is good. Yeah, I know for a fact these houses have been built within the past 10, 15 years, just from knowing the area. And as you can see, they're still building right across the street from where him and his has it been going that long? Wow, yeah, there is some, hey, I see some dust on the wall. Damn. When did I they was close? Here in 95, and I heard they closed in 2000. Okay. That's just, I'm not official on that, but that's what I heard through the system. No, 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 I'm wrong, not 2005, 2005. Okay. Do you know why they closed? It was like, let's see how, like, um, certain things go out like that are in demand like in the marketplace the youth offender went out when Gray Davis changed the law making the uh, age limitation from 16 to 14 to be tried as, as juveniles to adults they ran out of commodity they didn't have business they went out of business <laughs> basically to be honest the youth authority ran out of kids to place here because the government already did enough uh, 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 what do they call it? Conditioning. I call it brainwashing. Mm. They call it conditioning, treatment, and training. I call it brainwashing and getting us ready to be better criminals to make it to the California Department of Correction. It's just a bigger buck for the government. And now they can sell their property that they had here mm. for most time. They're getting rent now. Man. They couldn't pay for us. It's like slavery if we really look at it. After slavery was over, Willie Lynch and decided to make a new plan. Like, okay, it looked like Abe's gonna break down and sign that amendment into effect, that 16th thing, and basically giving them a different path of slavery. So they went to gangs, drugs, domestic violence, other entities to keep us enslaved without knowing we were enslaved. And when that ran out here in this tense, now that was in the 60, 1865, now we're here in 2022, and they couldn't keep 
juvenile offenders in California because law made them go to prison and they actually lost money because it was more to, to house a juvenile than as an adult. So now they, let's make that up. Mm. These are the kids like myself, Batman, Trub from Trub, Crumb from East Coast, Madman from 60s, the multiple hundreds of us that grew up as Wyatt babies right here. Mm, Fred C. Nellis. Okay, so in your best of memory, give us like a breakdown. So you said this was like a playground yeah, area. You said the chapel area. was there. Yeah. Like what was in that area? Do you, I we mean, start you cottages. Could... Like this is, to be honest, I, it, it's so thrown off because without the fences and the perimeters telling me where I can and cannot go, mm. I'm lost with direction. Yeah. But how Nellis was set up, you had a cottage would be probably this whole green grass. Mm -hmm. That's about the size of a unit, which they call a cottage. So, for example, this would be Jackson Cottage, which housed 150 inmates. You would have a dormitory with bunk beds. Then you'd have another dorm uh, side of the bunk beds would be single bunks. Then you'd have a wall, and there'd be rooms. That was the process. You start off phase one on the bunk beds, work your way to phase two to the hallway, and then you get into the room as a phase three. That was the highest level of privilege to try to keep us from beating up each other. They try to give you incentives. And if I would have known I could invest while I was, we used to have landscaping here. So I'd be around here like what these individuals are doing to make probably 25 to $30 an hour. I was doing for 35 cents right here. And chasing enemies with the shovels and stuff like that. It was violent here and there were no rules. And this was the general area. And it's, I want to say, I'm going to look this up, but I think they couldn't move this building. I remember hearing something about Nellis like couldn't be torn down. Rather. Yeah, uh -huh. they couldn't move that. Huh. Well, let's That's walk a over piece there. Like yeah. 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 So you were here in 90, what year? 1995, I pulled up here after leaving Norwalk. Okay. So when you get to YA, you go to, if you're from Southern California, which starts from Ventura to San Diego, you'll come to uh, Norwalk SRCC. That's the Southern Reception Center and Clinic. And most youthful, like 13 to 16, 15, you're coming here. And most were scared to come here. They kept. Were you scared, honestly? Um, no. no, I wasn't scared at this point because when we were in Norwalk, we already came with an army. <laughs> I right. came with Lil Solo from Swan, Bay Bay from Capanella, Green Eyes from Inglewood family. Uh, it was multiple homies and we knew what we were getting into. So it was a different feel as when I got to Norwalk. That's when I was scared, when I made it to YTS. Oh, okay. That's what, what when was I was scary scared. about that? Um, when getting to Norwalk was my first time in the Youth Authority. And when I went to Youth Authority from Juvenile Hall, I didn't have as much knowledge. So when I made it to Norwalk, my level of education and experience wasn't as high. So there was nervousness there. And I had just got bullied into being a blood or per se a Crenshaw Mafia by WAC 100. Cause I'm from Money Side Hustlers, which is now the Ransom Mob Blood. Not the WAC 100 we know though, The right? WAC 100 that we know, Manager 100, was the neighborhood bully on K. He was actually on m and in Juvenile Hall and Central, but there were three WACs there. And you had Big WAC, which was Bully WAC. And they all were buff and aggressive. And then he was, doing what he was doing now, manipulating and calling shots. But that dude had just left from here. So, so WAC 100 was here too? Yeah, WAC 100, this is where he started. So okay. when I met him in Juvenile Hall, he was hiding there under an alias, trying to avoid coming back on parole. Hmm. So he was a little older than us and that intimidated me going into Y knowing there were people like him there. So it was fear entering Y and then I seen like, oh, I could do this. It's just like camp. We're all seeing each other. Like, I know him from here, here, and here. Now, going in for the youngsters now, it's a different system. So, I don't want to give you knowledge that you can't use, but the best knowledge is just don't go. I've never been to prison, and that's your goal right now as a young homie to avoid. Because prison wasn't an option. We, they tried to rehabilitate us as you. Now, they're punishing us they want this to end they're trying to deter us with time death penalty three strikes and things similar to that 
And all you gotta do basically is find your land. It's hard to abide by a land of rules when we feel the rules were made by the enemy oppressor or the person who made our mom and father neglect us or do drugs. But if you, if you're using one part of that theory, you have to remember that the other part of that theory is so that we can gang bang and kill each other. So you can't say, I'm not following this system because it was made for my mama to smoke crack. But then you gotta realize it was made for your mama to smoke crack so that when it came down for you to be taught and install morals and ethics and values, they would be gang related, drug related, and abnormal to society so that they could put you here. Their goal though was, I would hope, to change us so much so that these prisons could be closed down and these places could have been our homes. Come to this program here, Fred C. Nellis, and if y'all do this well and make the murder rate and the crime rate in California deduce to this level, we'll build this for you guys. It's reasonably possible. Because we see it. This used to be where I've been beat up here. My feeling was knocked out by Crazo from all the 60s, somewhere in here. <laughs> so that means that they could actually give us money, and I wouldn't say give, but hold over our head a certain amount of money. And this is my logic to stop gangs. And I wouldn't say per se gangs, but the violence that come with the gangs. And if you really advertise it as a positive incentive, because that's what we were taught. Because 98% of the prison population comes from the youth authority. That's where the recidivism rate comes from that those don't understand. It's like they keep track of us like animals lost in the wild. They put a tracker on it. That's our parole number, our social security number, our criminal record. That's like our thing they put on the dolphin that goes missing, you know, and they keep a track of where he goes and migrates to. And theoretical pretense that's what they were doing with us by creating paperwork is watching the process of our mentality and criminal behavior and I figured this out while I was here not at this facility though because here I was still lost like everyone else but when I got to YTS and started meeting brothers coming from prison that were being taught by the other individuals older than us that this was a trap it's, it's a theory from a very upset confederate captain that lost the war that he thought he would win when he had to let go of slavery so whenever somebody is done wrong retribution is always there and that's incarceration Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace yeah. Steady job and some food to eat Just give me a little bit of peace